Are we doing this? Are we doing this, Lana? Are we doing it? I'm doing this right now. Here. All right. All right. Are we recording? Yes. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the first podcast from Blurds on Nerds with your host, Matt Ratcliffe, and my very good friend from across the country, oh, Lana. I'm Lana. Nice hello. Hello. Well, okay, so where do we begin? So what is, I guess we can do an introduction first, but yeah. Well, my name is Matt Ratcliffe. Uh, I reside in Indiana and Midwest boy, born and raised, and uh, grew up here, went to college here, came back, and trying to get my life together. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? What am I doing tomorrow? I don't even know. It's right. Just, Let's just focus on one minute at a time. <laughs> exactly. Minute by minute. Right. Minute by minute. So, Lana, what about you? My name is Lana. I grew up in Ventura County, California. Mm -hmm. Love it. Went to school in Atlanta. Graduated. Moved back. And now I teach. And I'm just happy to be here, if I can just be completely honest. You're so much better than me because you grew up in California. You left. You went to a completely different region of the country. Yes. And you came back. I grew up in Indiana, went to Purdue, and came right back home. But you went to Purdue. You right? went to Purdue. Boiler up. Boiler up. Okay, you went to Purdue. That's <laughs> not, that's fine. You stayed. Okay, you went to Purdue. <laughs> Right. Okay. I, 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 when you say it like that, I'm I'm okay with that. Okay. When you say it like that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of the podcast. So, Lana, when we say you know we thought about this for a long time, and we're like, what can we name our podcast? Right. And what makes it personal to us? Mm -hmm. And we're like, of course, you know, it's nerd culture, it's geek culture, but what name is flashy or not flashy but catchy? So. Mm -hmm. We came up with blurs on nerds. So when you think of the word blurred, what do you think of? Blurred is black nerd. As right. far as I'm concerned, that is the cut and dry definition. Of course, there are many different things that go into that definition. Like, you know, we're both black. Mm -hmm. You know, I think our demographic in nerd culture is definitely, definitely much smaller we have a little niche we don't see a lot of ourselves in nerd culture yet we still have this passion and this love for the tech the sci-fi you know mathematics science just anything of that nature and it kind of that kind of encompasses i think what we're both very passionate about Right. And I guess I just want to follow up and say, you know, this is not just for black nerds. This podcast is not just for black nerds. It's just something that ties to us. Uh, you know, we want to, you know, being a nerd, is, it, it, it transcends, you know, race, white race and nationality. But it's just something about us that makes us unique and ties us to our podcast. So anyone out there, please don't be offended. Uh, it's just because we're, we're, cool just <laughs> we're just black. We're just black. And we're just nerds. So, you know, instead of saying, oh, I'm a black nerd, you know, we keep it cool and simple like nerds do. And we call ourselves blurds. Yeah. So exactly how Lana um, said. I have it, to say, we yeah, didn't coin ahead. the phrase. I saw it online. I'm just going to keep it real. We didn't coin it. We didn't make it up. It's been around for a long time. There's been controversy about it. Some people think it's overused. We like it. But we make it cool, though. I think a lot of people use it. Like, you can go on Twitter Yep. and find the word blurred everywhere but we're making it cool so yeah. i say that with like a serious face because we are cool <laughs> we absolutely you know what it is what it is it is what it is and yeah. you, know, you know take a take offense all you want but we're too cool so <laughs> enough with that awkwardness uh, right <laughs> awkward <laughs> right so like like lana said we are here to talk about all things nerd culture, geek culture. I know in 2013, it's it's cool to be a nerd, but when we were in high school, it was not cool. Oh, it wasn't all. cool at all. It wasn't cool at all. So, but to get off of that topic, you know, we're not trying to get deep or anything, but get into the love of, you know, anything about movies, TVs, games, you know, anything to be passionate about, 
that's what we're here to talk about. So I want to know, Matt, I need to know a little bit more. I need to know when did your passion start? Movies, TVs, what, at what point did you realize that you were a little bit more passionate about some projects than some of your friends? Honestly, it was 7.30 a.m. on Mondays watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the original <laughs> season. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, my God. I dropped, I just dropped everything. I dropped my mic. Uh, oh, my I, gosh. I'm serious. As a kid, when cartoons used to, well, I don't know. I mean, do you consider Power Rangers? It was like the first, like, action, live action, the TV show. But, you know, it was on at 7.30 yeah. in the morning, you know. So I would see it before I would get it ready for school. So that was the first exposure I had to something that was kind of Japanese tangible um, under the nerd category and I loved it and I was obsessed sadly with what is it Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mm -hmm. Ninja Rangers was my Mm -hmm. absolute favorite and then they went I think they sold were the seven uh, they sold that production company so they have I think they're on Power Rangers number 15 right now I think I lost track after Power Rangers 7 but sadly I have to admit that I watched like the first seven series it's okay <laughs> we're all here to support each other it's fine no as you laugh behind that's my true. back but that's okay that's maybe fine. a little bit but not really right. right oh and just just so you guys know you know i'm i am here in indiana in indianapolis recording this and lana is out in california in la recording. Right? yes so we are doing a transatlantic, transatlantic. podcast Right? Uh, yeah, I could I could say that. I hope I said it right. Uh, if not, just email me or tweet me. Um, <laughs> but I think I said it right. So yeah, we're. This is just a side note, but we are doing this cross country. So this is. I don't know how many podcasters out there are doing that, but this is you know another step of coolness. We have a we have a lot of technology in this. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so okay, back to topic. So Lana, what about you? When did you know that you were part of this nerd culture? Yes. It all started in kindergarten Mm. where my dad, you know, my parents were such huge proponents of sci-fi fantasy video games. So that was never a problem in my household. And we had, you know, my dad brought home being a video game player himself, Mm -hmm. the first Atari 2600 with the wood grain panel. Where Not the wood grain the panel. The wood grain panel where wood you had to have the switch in the back of your TV from TV yep. the game. And all the kids wanted to come over. My neighbors had Coleco. Yes, I went there. My wow. My had Coleco. We had Atari. I'm not trying to date myself. I'm just saying what happened. Well, let me let me interrupt you really quick and don't be mad at me. Uh-oh. But, but what is Coleco? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a Atari. I'm good with Atari. Oh, but no. Coleco, like, what is, I'm like writing it down like Coleco. Oh, like, no. Wikipedia so Coleco when I get a chance. So you got to explain to me what Coleco is. I'm sure there's people out there that are like, Oh, no. Somebody literally has fallen out of their chair at this point. I'm not giving away my nerd card whatsoever. Period. We all make me. mistakes. My hand is reaching, but I'm pulling it back. Okay. Because, no, Coleco is old school. Um. Mm. Really, it's just another game system. I always thought it was pretty cool. My neighbors had it, so I only actually got to play it for a couple of t- a couple of times. They had, you know, different controllers and things. I don't remember Coleco games. I just remember that was the name of the system. Right. Like we had Atari, we were like Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, and Mario mm-hmm. all day every day. So that's kind of like what we did, and you know, Pac Man, the original Pac Man, original. That boop, 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 boop. I just play. I just downloaded that. It was the free on the Starbucks free game of the week. <laughs> so I, it was no, not Mr. Pac Man. It was Miss Pac Man. That was the free game of the week. And and I'm can like, I just oh. tell you when Miss Pac Man came out? That was like, oh my gosh. What's what's the difference? It's just a female. Is that what it? Yeah, it was a female. The graphics were definitely different. I mean, if you look at the graphics of the very first. Pac-Man. I mean, it's classic. It's cute. It's nostalgia. Yeah. Miss Pac-Man came out. I mean, she had little different acts in between, you know, each level. It was just, wow. Oh, Pac-Man so was it was a step up. And it was just, it was cute. So it was more theatrical. Okay. okay. There was more going on, more blinking lights, you know, any everything that keeps us gamers enthralled. To this day. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I need to know. So basically that was kind of the start. You know, my parents were super cool. Like when we were deciding between the first Nintendo system and Sega, you know, we actually had a family meeting. Yeah, because I need to know. This is what's going to de- de- determine if we're going to be friends or not. Is Uh-oh. you know, are you okay? It, well, you keep going, but we'll we'll discuss. We'll tab that it for was, later. It was it was Sega Genesis. It was Nintendo. <sighs> yeah, I know. And we sat around the table. We, I mean, this was a family meeting. We did because it's a serious decision. We did pros and cons. You know, me and my sister were Nintendo. My dad was kind of leaning towards Sega. My mom was like, well, I'm just going to watch y'all play anyway. So, (laughs) you know, we ended up getting the Nintendo. I know. But my cousins had Sega, so it was all good. (laughs) Okay. Because, see, I, the first system I had was a Sega Genesis. And the first game I had, I guess it's kind of, future conversation will tell you what kind of games I love, but the first game my father got me was Street Fighter 2. <gasps> and Street Fighter 2 and Sonic. Yes, yes. So that's why see, I'm so obsessed. That's why I was Sega. I never had the Sonic experience because, see, you, you know, missed I was out. Like, you missed out. You know. But this is old school Sonic. You know, the Sonic sadly yeah. crap that they're making now is just a hot mess. Awful. I mean, because Sega's trying to redefine Sega, uh, Sonic the way that Nintendo's kind of redefining Mario, and it's just not right. working. And, but the old school Sonic, I mean, Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic yeah. 3. Sonic 3 was the best, because that's when you could play as Knuckles. Oh, my, Knuckles was my dude. Duck, Knuckles was my dude. Um, <laughs> I love Knuckles. Uh, but yeah, Street Fighter 2, yes, I'm a huge Capcom fan. Sorry, Capcom haters, but huge Capcom fan, and I'm a huge, huge, huge old school Sonic fan, not yeah. new school. But just a side note, I wrote down Coleco, and I will be, I like wrote it down, like, I'm, if you hear this, if you hear something in the background, it's my pen, I keep underlining the word <laughs> Coleco, I, like, I need to look this up, I need to know, I feel, like I, know. I feel like there's other people that will be really disappointed in me, like, they will never listen to this podcast again, because they're like, because they're like, he's not for real, he's not, oh, he's not, he, he's not one of us, he's not one of us, you know, so, <laughs> so I have to ask Switching over from games, right? Movies, TV actors, like you know, what's your genre? Is it sci-fi? Is it fantasy? Like, what just kind of is there a certain franchise that really, really just excites you beyond all reason? Well, I'll list the shows, and I think when I do, it'll kind of put me into maybe sci-fi. I think, mm-hmm. but huge, huge, huge. BSG, Battlestar Galactica, oh. Firefly fan, um, Fringe, loved, loved Fringe. I was so <laughs> upset that it, it left early. Um, and Dollhouse, Dollhouse was a great show, even though it was canceled two seasons in. Was it two seasons? Two seasons in. Um, movies, again, I'm a huge Marvel fan, so um, anything to do with, uh, I'm more of an obscure Marvel like character like character to character. Okay. I, I prefer the obscure characters. Like I'm my favorite character is uh Laura Kinney or <laughs> X twenty three, which is Wolverine's daughter. He's oh, right, right. Okay. Huge, huge, huge fan of hers, fan of Nova. So I love Marvel. Not I'm trying, trying and this is where we're gonna defer again, Lana. I'm I'm trying to get into D C like hardcore. They're not DC. making it easy for you. Not we'll they're not, that, and we're gonna talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm sorry. So I'm back, back on the subject. But yeah, so that's yeah. movies, TV, like genre. I, I would say I'm a huge, huge, huge uh, sci-fi. I don't know what does Game of Thrones fit under. Does that fit under fantasy? Fantasy. Okay. Fantasy. Yeah. Fantasy. So yeah, like I, I would say mix of strong. I would have a strong mix of fantasy and and sci-fi because that's mm-hmm. any show I'm thinking of in my head is like yeah, it's either fantasy or sci-fi. Mm-hmm. And then you got Mad Men and Walking Dead. Right, <laughs> right. I don't know who Mad Men fits in. I don't know, but it just it's there. I watch it faithfully. Right. <laughs> and Breaking Bad, which I need to get back on. You you got me on Breaking Bad. I need to get back on it. Yeah, because July. It's that show is serious. We have like a special blurred edition of Breaking Bad. Just focus on that. And if we do, that's good because I'll need something to push me. Yeah. to watch it because i have you know i have netflix so i have all the episodes yeah. so it's just a yeah. matter of catching up so what about you would you would which your category of choice 
Um, I'd have to say sci-fi. Again, I was introduced very early. The parents were alien, the alien franchise. They were fanatics. Like I remember I, at the drive-in when it Hold on, came hold in. on. Yeah. I, I love your parents. Your can, parents can I just say so cool. like coolest parents ever because you I know, believe that having slumber parties and in the sixth grade and it's like midnight and my dad's got the TV hooked up to the speakers and we're playing aliens. And, well, the neighbors got mad, but that's another story. Uh, oh. You know, and so I grew up with, like, Alien, and can I just say Alien Director's Cut, to me, that is Alien, not the theatrical release, but the Director's Cut. Alien, oh, the Aliens, Alien 3 was a depressing ball of misery, and I only watched it twice. I can't watch it anymore. But that wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't really Scott, was it? Uh, No. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you, my point. <laughs> you know, Alien Resurrection, I just prefer not to talk about. Um, AVP? Again. <laughs> the silence. I love I the, just, the dead air. Was I just I'm like, I can't. It, it, it hurts too much. Uh, <laughs> I, I have it downstairs, and I have not watched it. It's okay. You're not missing much. Okay, I just, it's, you know, it hurts me because if you got the special four series of the Alien versus Predator graphic novels, which sadly my dad had and got ruined in a flood. Oh. R.I.P. Um, Sad face. You All know, day. Like our whole family was heavily invested in Aliens versus Predators. Like, it came out on Christmas. We dragged my grandma to the theater because we needed to go watch this movie. And she's probably distraught. She's like, where am I? She's what is this a, mouthpiece coming out of this creature to it eat? Was, you know, people? she's just like, you know, you know, she's passed on now, but I remember it's so funny. She was she was down. She just kind of looked at us like we were crazy, like, okay, we're going to do this. But, you know, of course, we're all excited. And so I was very excited for Prometheus. You know, it's a lot of discussions, but, you know, I have the kind of household where we literally spent two hours going through alien mythology and, you know, just different scenes in the movie. Did this really happen, especially in the first alien? Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. It's such a, it's such a great universe. I, I is. loved Prometheus and I still talk about it. Yeah. In, in the, in the moment, I didn't. In the moment, I enjoyed the movie, but then as I left, I was like, I don't really know if I like it. And then I got on this forum, Prometheus forum, and just the, the uh, theories that people were giving, like, you know, what it really means, who the engineers really are. Yes, uh, yes, it's so I, I loved it. I thought it was just a great concept. I mean, I, I really like Ridley Scott. I think he's a really cool director. Yeah, uh, he's brilliant. Writer. Just the tie-in, you know, to the first Alien, and just Ripley. I mean, really, has there ever been you know, just a more awesome character. I mean, oh my gosh. And, you know, especially Alien and Aliens, it's just, you know, she's amazing. And with Sigourney, you know, Weaver, Sigourney Weaver? Sigourney Weaver, yes. And, yeah, you is. know, so that's kind of like, you know, that was kind of like my early beginnings. And then it went on, you know, to like Dragon Ball and Robotech and... Oh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. You know, they're, you know they're, uh, in talks, they being uh, Funimation, I guess. Okay. Uh, Funimation's in talks to revamp or uh, reboot Dragon Ball Z. I'm scared, but I'm hopeful. Well, you know, the thing uh, that <laughs> I am a little this. irritated with... Oh, I would love it too, but the thing I'm a little bit like low-key upset about is that that show ended... I, just, I don't want to say years ago, but what, like six years ago? Mm -hmm. And they have been remaking PS3 <laughs> games and Xbox 360 <laughs> games. And I'm thinking, how much more can you do? There's no new material. Like, there, I know. What, what's, what's so different? I mean, it's the same story. It's the same. It's it's the same thing. I mean, the fighting, you, you give it a new engine, but it's the same game. Can it's I the same game. Side note. <laughs> Yes. When Goku turned into a Super Saiyan, why did it take three episodes for him to gather all his energy? No, let's talk about let's take it a step back to the spirit bomb. <laughs> oh, the that, spirit bomb, wait. <laughs> that was half a season. 
of him having his hands in the air and those rabbits were like what do you want from me i've given you everything i've given you i've given you everything for the past two episodes i cannot give you any more can i have a carrot can i get some energy replenishment it's like why are you still concentrating on that spirit bomb (laughs) was that with who was that who's the villain frieza Oh my god. Yeah. And you know, he done went, visited Chi Chi, came <laughs> back. He's still in the air with the spare bomb. I mean, you know, Frieza could have grown up from a little boy to a grown right. man. He's still in the air. <laughs> Frieza could have went to like a gravity training pod, could have got stronger. He used to sit in there having some coffee, reading a newspaper, like, well, whenever you're ready, I mean I'm good. I'm thinking that is the biggest and I'm a huge Naruto fan, but oh. that is the most filler in a TV show I had ever, ever it seen. Ridiculous. <laughs> it and was yet, so over the top. I watched it every day because and faithfully. any day could have been the day. <laughs> That's right. That he was going to release that spirit bomb. <laughs> and you're thinking, this better be the best effing spirit bomb <laughs> Just ever. ever. <laughs> this better destroy this entire planet. And then it like destroyed, like, I don't know, the, the width of Indiana. I'm thinking. Exactly. And he's, you concentrated all the energy from every plant and animal on this planet. That means you should have destroyed this planet. Like, I don't understand why you just destroyed, like, a 50, like, a 100 mile radius. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here choking. <laughs> why do you have me going back to these things that make me so angry as a child? I was so upset. <laughs> You know what? Because the key to really moving on <laughs> is, you know, the ability to discuss and face to redeem out to release the frustration with somebody who understands. I, I I feel so good. Like I feel so good. Like right now, because I feel like there's a lot of weight off my shoulders. Because I can talk about a bunch. I can talk about Inuyasha. That that pissed me <laughs> off. That this is they just stopped. Like they just stopped. Like, aren't there more shards out there to collect? Like, why, why did you just stop? Like, is that it? Is that really it? You know, like, we oh, we could talk about every anime show out there that just abruptly ends. And you got shows like Bleach that are still on. Sorry. I was a huge Bleach fan in the beginning. Uh-huh. Come on. Second worst filler show in history besides Dragon Ball Z. Come on. It, they have, like, stories. It got to the point where they would have like a season dedicated to fillers, but you didn't know if it was present day or like past tense, like it was past. And I I just didn't understand. I'm like, are these characters, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, aren't they in like the spirit world? Like, what are they, why are they in school? Like, I don't understand. Like, (laughs) I was so like overwhelmed because I was putting, I was putting my time between Inuyasha, Bleach and Naruto and I was just like, you know, Naruto, I woke up one day and Inuyasha was just gone. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then Bleach had a filler season and then Naruto was still giving me what I needed. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to stick with Naruto. That's the only anime besides Full Metal Alchemist that I've stuck yeah. with. I was good. Okay. Last <laughs> one, because I just have to. I have to. This definitely deserves a mention. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam. The original. The yes. original. Let's get it straight yes and can i just i mean what kind of pulled me into that world was i really really loved the score i loved the music it was dramatic Mm -hmm. the thematic elements were so mature and just the relationships between all of the pilots and you know i just i like their names really i I like the way I'm glad one of us remembers their names because I remember that show, but I can't remember. I remember I remember that series, and then it ended, and they did Mobile Suit Gundam. I don't know ABC, you know, they get, <laughs> and then I, it is some. It's like clearly these were different writers. This was like a different studio. Yeah, yeah, it and was different. There was it was just different. It was completely 180. I'm like, I can't watch it. I only watched the original series, and that was it. My favorite name, Miliardo, was like Peacecraft. Uh, yeah. I just like the names <laughs> and they wore like cool little helmets and coats like the I, British red coats and I just I don't know I just I really love it that. I thought you know Eatle was crazy wait 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 can you can you can you say that again <laughs> no 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 don't laugh no, that's it. please for the for the audience I would like for them to hear that again what did you say Eatle <laughs> such passion such passion in that time. I mean, I did because he always wore shorts and a tank top. 
I used to wonder if he was cold. And <laughs> well, when you sound like that, <laughs> you know, you, 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 he sounds a little chilly. <laughs> yeah, and I just, you know, he was always kind of suicidal, ready to fling himself into death. And I don't know. I like you know the funny thing is when I think of when I think of and I kind of pull it back to movies, but or TV shows and movies. But when I think of Mobile Suit Gundam, I think of Ender's Game. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I read that in middle school. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, middle school, and it reminds me of that because you know they're kids like fighting this like battle, and of course you know Japanese adults look like they're fourteen, so <laughs> it, it it kind of fits. They don't. Eat. It kind of it kind of fits. Like they look. You like how old in the show? You're like how old are you? And they're like forty seven. Like, right. Look like there's like fresh out of high school, like fresh. Exactly. Like none of them have facial hair, and if they do, it's like very over dramatic. Yes. It's yes. it's like one or the other. It's very polar. You can't you can't have like a middle ground. Like oh, I'm twenty five and I look twenty five. It's no. like no, I'm I'm twenty five and I look twenty five months old. I'm like <laughs> you know, like, not really. Uh, okay. okay, okay, so. What movie, so what movie have you seen? Because, you know, this is the time mm-hmm. of the year where the big blockbuster hits are starting to come out. Yes. Uh, what have you seen that's, you know, been epic? I've seen, I saw Iron Man 3. I saw yes. Star Trek. We'll talk about Star Trek next week. But Iron Man 3, I saw it. And initially i am a fan of the first two i like the first two more i did like iron man 3 it will be in the collection that Mm -hmm. being said i was a little bit disappointed just because i kind of expected a lead into you know the second wave of adventures and there was really nothing there did you did you stay to the end i did and yes we saw you know banner but Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of, I mean, it was funny. It was cute. I really liked it. But um, I just, you know, I kind of wanted more. I completely, okay. So this is my take on it. When I saw the movie, I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed it for what it was. The sad thing was we just saw The Avengers. Okay. Probably 50 times. Right. Because I know I, know I bought it on Blu-ray 3D. We watched yeah. it like twice, two or three times. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. And the, it, some of the best special features, uh, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers or whoever makes that movie, Marvel, you need to give us some money because we are about to blow up yeah. these Marvel movies. But Avengers was just really good. But you come from that and then you go and see Iron Man 3, which is kind of like, I compare it to, I, I call it, I called it the light Dark Knight Rises. I see. And I see exactly where you're going with that. Because it was, you know, I did some research after the movie because I, I was curious as to what comics this was pulled from. And the big arc that I, this Iron Man 3 is pulled from is the uh, Iron Man Extremis or Extremis, uh, Extremis, I don't know, a story arc from 2006. And that's where they have the Extremis plant that the doctor uses to give them powers and all that. So that's where it pulls from, but it's also a dark time for Iron Man as well. Yeah. It pulled from it pulled from I think three or four series total between 2006 and now uh, like with the suit and like the suit becoming it's by moving by itself. Yes. It pulls from multiple arcs of Iron Man, but the main the core of it is the Iron Man extremist. So I, it reminded me as I watched it, as I did a little bit of research about <clears throat> this third or this trilogy or finale. I'm going to use that loosely because you never know uh, today. There could be six more Iron Mans. But um, I thought I thought it was good. It just reminded me of a, a lesser Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. It just didn't, it wasn't as impactful. It wasn't as uh, dark, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed like, you know, he had this rise and then after the Avengers, he has this PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. And which is obviously it's true, it does happen. But it just seemed very, you know, like Batman. And I was like, oh, I just feel like Nolan did it better. But right. isolating the movie by itself, I thought the movie was good. And like you said, my I completely agree. My complaint is that there was no tie in. And I think Thor two comes out this year, doesn't it? It does. So I wonder if they're going to go along those lines, how they ended Iron Man 3 at the post credits and kind of do something. But that doesn't really tie in with Avengers, but something to kind of keep you keep your palate wet. I think the main difference is, you know, Avengers is on its third movie 
Um, Thor will be on its second. The Captain America sequel will be on its second. So we might not see another Iron Man. I mean, we may not see another Iron Man movie. Well, I did. Sure, we'll see him in Avengers, but you know, as far as just standalone, that particular franchise might be over because there are others to develop. I don't know if they're gonna try to do the Hulk again because you know that's. But see, I like the last Hulk. So did I, and I was a little bit salty when I found out that Edward Norton, you know, had been dropped from the project. But, you know, Mark Ruffalo, I'm completely happy with his performance and with him being Bruce Banner, so. I honestly think Mark Ruffalo was an excellent choice. I do love Norton, but I just feel that for this type of movie, the comedy appeal that he brought to, or the comedy attitude that he brought to the, the, the franchise, one, Avengers was, it was so good, but it was so funny at the same time, it, it it played very well with funny and serious. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't too, it wasn't funny, so funny that it was corny and it wasn't so serious that it was boring. Mm-hmm. It was just, it teetered that line so well. And I guess listening to the type of shows I liked growing up, I guess I am a huge Joss Whedon fan. So yes, aren't we all? He, 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 <laughs> aren't we really all? If you're a nerd and you don't like Joss Whedon, like I don't have to like, Coleco, but you have to love Joss Whedon. Right. You, know, you, you have to love him if you consider yourself a nerd. And he has done, he's done so well with this movie or uh, with the Avengers. I'm really excited to see what he does with Avengers 2. Mm-hmm. I did Google after because Google is my best friend. I did Google after Iron Man 3. Iron Man 4 and the president of the studios, of Marvel Studios, was interviewed and he came out and said that, you know, this is phase 2, I believe. And they have I guess in the movie business, they don't look past two years. So oh. their focus is on, you know, Iron Man 3, which just came out, Thor 2, <clears throat> Captain America, and then, you know, they're obviously the Avengers 2. But they don't look past that because that's not a part of this phase. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's rumors about Doctor Strange having a movie. Yes. Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy is yeah. a movie. So there's all these other side movies and Ant-Man. But other than that, when you look at Iron Man 4, they're not, they're, that's not on the table yet because they're focused on, that's what he said, you know, on the record, that they're just focused on phase two. And then phase three can be, I think, I think Doctor Strange fits into a phase three. I'm not sure because mm-hmm. it's all these rumors, you know, nothing's confirmed or they may be confirmed. I don't know. But um, I did find something really interesting that I didn't know that. Iron Man, I think it's kind of safe to say Iron Man is the highest grossing action movie of all time. Really? I know it made over a billion worldwide. I did see that. Yeah, it made Uh a billion worldwide, 300 million just in the States, and then, you know, the 700 Mm million-ish around the world. It grossed 100 million in China, which really surprises me. I didn't know that China was doing it like that. Yeah. Um, Wow. (laughs) <laughs> right that's all you can say you're like oh wow that's really yeah that's real and then it's the highest this is one thing i found in entertainment weekly it said that it's the highest grossing movie in history in vietnam and malaysia really yeah i'm like how do you <laughs> ever ever they're excited i they're oh, excited what are you gonna I, would, I was like should i clap or yeah, should i, I... yeah it's kind of cool yeah, when you cool. when you step out of America and you're like, wow, yeah, a hundred million dollars in China. Yeah, and also you know rumors about you know Jeremy Renner has gone on record saying that he was unhappy. Okay, oh, yeah. so let's development of Hawkeye's character, and I can kind of feel him on that. He didn't get his own movie, but you know, I would I personally would be really really sad if Jeremy Renner was replaced as Hawkeye, because I really, really liked his character. And honestly, watching the Avengers made me want to see more of him, made mm-hmm. me want to see more of Scarlet. And I just, or was it Black Widow? Was it? Oh, I'm about to lose my nerd card. I got to look this up. Um, yeah. Keep going. I'm just, I'm going to look it up. Okay. But I think it's Black Widow. But, um, she had red hair like Scarlet and G.I. Joe, okay? Nerd, nerd card returned. So- <laughs> no, right? Right. Oh, my God. Put that in there. 
I should have this stuff like already suited up, ready to go. Like I need to have Wikipedia. Wikipedia and Go- and Google are my BFFs. So, but um, you know, I I was kind of intrigued by their past a little bit, and I would. I mean, I I could see a movie just kind of exploring their history together because I mean they were definitely very good friends and there was definitely a bond there and I would you know I'm I'm interested in her history and his history you know and I think they could carry a movie together I think that's fair oh she is she's Black Widow did you say that yep okay yeah she's Black Widow yeah so why did I call her Scarlet anyways but um because her name is Scarlet yeah (laughs) right <laughs> why did i call her scarlet you know it's a good question her name is scar joe <laughs> scar joe sj for short right. no you see i heard this and this rumor is true um or it's true because post avengers jeremy renner was interviewed while he was filming the born identity yeah. um and or the reboot of the born identity and he had came out on record saying that you know he wished that his the, he didn't come off as ungrateful but he came out and said that he wished that there was more development for his character now in my opinion out of every avenger i think captain america is the most boring avenger i'm sorry the most boring marvel character yes okay here's why i think he's boring one you have superpowers you're you're like a diet superman (laughs) because you have everything Superman-ish has, but you can't fly. You can't get anywhere fast. You need, like, a motorcycle or a car. Yeah. At least Jeremy Renner or a Hawkeye, like, he can shoot something out the sky. Like, how far can a shield yeah. really go? Like, okay. it can go maybe, like, a half a block. Yeah. But an arrow can go some miles. And then there's, like, if you if you Wikipedia Green Arrow's history, uh-huh. or Green Arrow, wow. If you Wikipedia uh, Hawkeye's history, he has so many different types of arrows that can do so many different things versus Captain America can freeze in the cold for <laughs> decades to do a sequel. <laughs> so that's just my opinion. I, but you know, I know there's huge, huge, huge Captain America fans out there, and if you are a huge Captain America fan, people, I am sorry, but I just think he's the most boring <laughs> of the Avengers, of Marvel uh, mainstream characters. In my opinion, I think he's just really, really kind of tired. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I feel in that. I wasn't really familiar. I mean, there was, like, um, the whole Marvel X-Men Civil War thing. Oh, yeah, yes. You know, so there was that. And so I have some familiarity with that, even though I don't typically read Marvel. That storyline kind of intrigued me. Uh, I think it's a cool storyline. Actually, I was curious to see if, or I'm curious to see if Joss Whedon will take it there because that is a really big arc for Marvel. That Civil War was a really big thing for um, Iron Man. Like, his post-traumatic stress, a lot of that in the comics comes from Mm-hmm. the aftermath of what he did during that arc. It's a really good arc. And then even, like, you know, crossing over for Avengers versus X-Men, you know, mm-hmm. like that. That would cost, that would be, like, I, a trillion, cabillion dollars to make, but it would be epic. It would be <laughs> epic. It, but it would be epic and it would be cool, but studios, I, don't, I doubt they would ever come together to do something so... Yeah, I mean, it's epic. Big. But the amount that they would have to pay, I mean, that would almost have to be a labor of love. You know, the amount that they would have to pay, you know, everybody if we kept the same actors for all the major characters to do something like that. Yeah, and how long can you keep, like, Robert Downey Jr. for this role? Yeah. Like, how long can you keep him? I'm not saying he's not old by any means, but how long can you keep him? Like, he's his fame has really grown since he was cast for Iron Man. So how long can you really keep him? Or Chris Evans... You know, as his career skyrockets, too. I mean, how can you keep these people? And obviously, the Hulk. They don't have to worry about the Hulk because they change that person every couple years. So there's, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Ruffalo didn't show up for the next one. Right, right. <laughs> just because it just goes <laughs> along with the trend of Hulk. So that's <laughs> that's I'm off my I'm off my soapbox because I can talk about that for another hour or two. I but, guess we're gonna have to just take kind of a wait and see attitude. See what happens. Hope they don't screw it up. You know, we are waiting for a Justice League movie, but, you know, Marvel's got their own studios. Um, DC Uh, has to go with Warner Brothers. I wish they had their own studios. Green Lantern was not the business, and... I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. It was... It got such bad reviews. You didn't miss anything? 
no one, everyone was like, don't see that movie. The movie's well, crap. It's not, you know, I've always wanted a Wonder Woman live action. Mm-hmm. Um, I've wanted, you know, I mean, Man of Steel, I'm very excited about. I think, you know, um, the producers, directors, X Snyder, I think we are really, really in for something pretty epic when Man of Steel comes out. I believe that. It is going to be, I think, the way that if Christopher Nolan even follows a hint of what he did with Batman, yeah, I love this dark mm-hmm. t- tone. Because, you know, you, it can't be all uppity fantasy, you know. Yeah. Hero, heroes or super, super people or comic book heroes, they're not... Yeah, they're super, but they're also human in a way. I mean, they still have emotions. They still go through things. They still have bad days. They still have bad matchups. Yeah. Um, obviously, Superman and Doomsday. You know, like yeah. So it's stuff happens. You can't sugarcoat, or you know, Batman and Bane. Like that's bound to happen. It happens yeah. in the comics. Why not? I was so glad that Christopher Nolan brought Bane to the stage or to the theater yes. because yes, 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 yes. You you have to break these characters. I mean, to make them seem real, they can't win every match. Yeah. And at first, you know, when I heard that Zod was going to be the villain, I was kind of, I was like, really again, because I really, 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 really would have loved, you know, a doomsday and, you know, the whole saga with like, you know, high father and just, right. you know, the fears. I mean, there's so much in Superman's universe that can be brought to the screen, but I guess, you know, keep it basic for the first one. Um, and we'll see what happens. Because who was the villain in what was the first Batman? Batman Begins? It was Scarecrow? Yes. I think it was Scarecrow. So, you know, even that way, like, you know, you have Scarecrow as the first villain. He's, yeah, if you watch, if you're a fan of Batman, yeah, you know about Scarecrow, but he's not like the most epic or the coolest villain. And of course, he saved the Joker for Joker. number two. I know, that's why. <laughs> That was excellent. That was an excellent film. I mean, and then, you know, I think the joke out of the all three villains, main villains, I think Joker was the best. Um, but, of course, that arc spans all of Batman history. It, but, you know, Bane, I thought Bane was a really good conclusion because you have to, you know, break in the bat. That, that, the one DC comic that I really read was Breaking the Bat mm-hmm. um, with B- Bane's arc. And I thought it was just such a dark comic. I thought it was just a dark series and it was just honest. And I mean he really he really broke that dude. <laughs> like I mean they translated it pretty well in the in the movie, but in the comic, I mean they he really he really broke him like in half. Well, since um we're talking about comics a little bit, tell me what is on your pull list right now? What are you what are you excited about? What well, do you do? Can you'll be happy for me because we talked about this a few weeks ago. Yeah about a pull list and I've never had a pull list. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what they were. You had to sit down and was like, Matt, you really <laughs> if you really like comics, like you need to listen. <laughs> right. So I went to we have a comic book shop called Hero House. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really cool. It's like a hole in the wall. It's just all all you need. Comics, T shirts, toys. And right now I finally got my pull list and right now I am on X-23, so I'm going back and rereading all her entire series. She has mm-hmm. three three or four series total. Oh. Uh, it ended in 2011, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I'm rereading all those. Um, Marvel now, of course, you know, as DC-52 has booted mm-hmm. up. So has Marvel. They redid, they did theirs with Marvel now. Okay. And I'm reading Nova. Mm-hmm. So his reboot, I'm reading before that, I'm reading AVX, so Avengers vs. X-Men, which is interesting. Okay. And I'm reading my favorite right now, and I can talk about this for days, is Avengers Arena, which is based, it's the, the villain arcade goes to the Avengers Academy and scoops up, I can't remember off the top of my head, like a dozen or so young heroes, including X-23s, of course, my favorite. Mm-hmm. And he puts them in a Hunger Games-esque situation. So they all have to mm-hmm. kill each other. Only one can live. So it's a really dark, really, really dark series. Mm-hmm. And the good thing, the thing that's cool is, um, this really isn't a spoiler, but X-23 is in a lot of this. The comic isn't over yet, but she's in a lot of the comics. She hasn't died yet. I pray that she does not. But... You know, a lot of people write in, and there's been a number. I didn't know there were that many X-23 fans. I mean, a lot of people wrote in, like, yelling and screaming, mm-hmm. talking about how, you know, how can you kill these characters? And 
you know, these are characters that people have been following for years, and you just, I mean, he'll just, the writers will just kill them off, like, <laughs> in, like, a dialogue, you know, like, are you serious? Like, two, he, two, uh, two people, or two people died, heroes died in the first episode, or the first uh, book, comic. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? I, I had no emotional tie to them, but some people wrote in, and they're like, I've been following this character for years. So, you know, of course, their response is, you have to understand that this comic isn't a, it's, yeah, it's in the Marvel universe, but it's in a different timeline. I mean, you know, you have to understand it's like in a universe in a universe yeah. that, you know, X-23 may be dead in this universe, but she may be alive in these other 12 universes. Just like, we remember when we talked about Wolverine and where to start, if you want to start reading no Wolverine comics, like, where do you start? There's like 70 different series going on at the same time. Yeah. Or even like Superman or, you know, there's so many parallel universes. Yeah, it's the same thing with, Earth, you know, like DC, you know, Earth 1, 2, 3, Earth 22, Earth 92, you know, so it's, you know, you have all these different universes. So, you know, you can pick and choose kind of what version of your favorite character you like and kind of go there. See, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I would like to follow something that kind of just sticks. And I know when you get into comics, especially with like Nova or, or anything like Avengers, mm-hmm. X-Men, of course, there's so many different, you know, Ultimate X-Men, X-Force, uh, you know, all these different kinds. And you just have to really pick one. And you just have to, I think you just have to pick it and you have to follow it. So that's what, those are the ones that I'm sticking with. So, you know, like I, we had mentioned beforehand, you know, I'm Team Marvel. I'm trying to get into the DC and you, Lana, are very DC oriented. I'm, I'm DC right now. I'm trying to. I think I'm gonna start off with Marvel Light with Avengers Assemble. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna add that to my pool right now. As a well, my pool has changed recently. I had Superman, Action, Wonder Woman, Star Trek, Justice League, Teen Titans. Oh, Teen Titans. Batwing. I have since dropped. Teen Titans, Batwing, Action, and Wonder Woman. I just... (laughs) (laughs) Take a deep breath. I'm sorry. I just... Because I I get mad. Okay. Can I... Okay. I love Wandy. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Wonder Woman. And, you know, with her reboot, I think, you know, George Perez... What he did with Wonder Woman was pretty epic. I thought it was wonderful. I loved her storylines. Yeah. Um, what Azarello is doing, I'm just, a lot of people like it. I don't want to take anything away from him, you know, as a storyteller. But I just, for me personally, it's just not where I wanted to see her go. And you know, so I dropped her from the pool. Mm-hmm. She killed me to do it. I tried so hard. I waited for over a year. You know, oh. and I went through these issues and I was just like, you know, the gods played such have played such a major storyline throughout this arc. Yeah. I just you know, I just got a little tired. You know, the way they've changed the um the Amazons, you know, they've turn them pretty pretty brutal uh didn't you, didn't you say this one is this reboot is very personal too did you mention that before well it's i mean for her it's just you know she's fighting all her siblings zeus is her father you know she's not molded from clay i mean it's just so much even you know with hippolyta who's like a statue somewhere it's just <laughs> you know it's just different i just don't like it and I'm you know the God stuff was you know was good in the beginning it was different and when I read that they were going to turn Wonder Woman into something along the lines of a horror type comic I was just like okay wait what say it again a a horror yeah because I mean if you look at kind of where she was before so where she is now it definitely is with a lot of the imagery it's much much darker um the storytelling I thought in the beginning was good but after a year I'm kind of ready for her to get out there. I'm just kind of tired of it. I need something. I just want something new. I don't really care about her finding her siblings. And I just don't care. I'm finding that I don't care. I don't care about her relationships with any of the gods, with any of... (laughs) It's just not as impactful. It's just not. It's just not. I want to see her out in the world. I want some type of crossover they've brought in orion 
and I just, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep up with it. You know, I will keep up with it, you know, so I can stay abreast with what they're doing with storyline. Because like I said, I love Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, you know, if there's a shift, then, you know, maybe I'll pick it back up. Or if there's like a particular issue, I'll pick it back up, you know. But well, I found, right now it's just not doing it for me. Well, I did find it kind of interesting to if, just kind of pull back a little bit how we had talked about Marvel's doing all these movies and then you have Superman and then you have the Justice League that mm -hmm. should be happening. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if you noticed that while Marvel's dominating the like box offices, mm -hmm. or the box office, yeah. uh, DC is dominating like TV. So you have right. Arrow, you, know, you, had, you had Smallville, which was on for like 10 seasons. Mm -hmm. And you have Arrow, which I'm currently watching Arrow and I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I never really followed Green Arrow at all, but I, and obviously this is uh, Oliver different, a very different Oliver Queen as I've heard. Right, right. Uh, but I like it. I think it's a good take, and I, I know I heard there's uh, some other shows that CW and some other channels are looking at to bring DC to the small screen. Yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of cool, a cool take on how one and the other are dominating the box office. Obviously, Superman's going to do very well. It's, yeah, that's just a fact. Um, and I'm sure that Justice League win, because there's really no if, when it comes out, it'll do well financially, too. If they can get somebody who can do the screenplay, you know, and because they're going to have, I mean, the big three is Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman. The, right. That's, you know, that's the trinity. That's the core of the Justice League. And, you know, I like the Justice League comic, you know, as everybody who follows even if you don't follow dc it was it was all over mainstream media everybody knows that they've got wonder woman and superman together now yeah and i know and, how you felt about it i do ship them i do but <laughs> what you know but <laughs> die lois um so honest the I, honesty I, here is just i just i can't there's um, no comparison I just, there's there's no development, like, you know, with the former series with Wonder Woman, with mm -hmm. um, the former Justice League series, there was kind of like, you know, there were a lot of crossovers with Superman and Wonder Woman. Right. They had this kind of deep, deep, deep friendship that kind of went beyond just your normal, we're friends. Right. But it never crossed the line to anything inappropriate. And that, to me, that's the kind of buildup that was needed to make the relationship that they have now real, as opposed to just being something of a gimmick. So I have to say I'm disappointed in what I've seen so far. I mean, there's been some Superman crossover, but, you know... Is Superman is tied to Lois. He was married to Lois for years and years and years. And a lot of people are like, you know, what about Lois? And they're just using Wonder Woman and Lois, 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 Lois. I never like Lois. I don't like Lois. I think she's snarky. I don't like the fact that Superman acts like a fool around Lois. I don't like that the argument for Lois is that she brings him his humanity because his parents did that years and years and years before he even met Lois. I don't like that he loses his mind. And like in the comics, he always goes crazy. Everything bad that happens to him, every time he has a major personality change, it's because something happened to him. But that's that's his tie to humanity. I mean, it is true. I, I don't think she, I don't, no, 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 no. I don't think she. I don't think she. And I'm not as familiar with Superman. His his complete history as you are. But from my small take on it, from like the Dean Cain, Superman and Lois <laughs> from back in the day, right, right. I'm bringing that up because <laughs> I used to that love that show. Smart. But it was like, you know, yeah, so you, you didn't think I would bring that up, did you? You see? Yeah, see, look, everyone out there, y'all probably like, oh, my God. Like, Dean Kane back in the day? But that, I always saw it as that she was his anchor, his humanity. <sighs> because, and every show has, or not show, but every superhero has some type of anchor that is not them, that is, you know, it's something external. It's something that is not a part of them, like. I can understand that, but I mean, I've heard arguments as extreme as, 
you know, he can't, it, basically it's made to seem like he can't function without her. Like he's nothing without her. Like he can't make it in the world if he doesn't have Lois. And the fact of the matter is the most valuable lessons that he's learned came from Jonathan Kent. It didn't come from Lois Lane. Mm. He thought Lois was cute. And he got all tongue-tied and was like, I want to date her. But all of his main life lessons came from Jonathan and Martha. And I think they instilled in him enough of, you know, feelings for humans, his humanity, for him not to go out of control, even if there was no Lois, he would be fine. And I mean, I, okay, I'm going to see what's going to happen in Man of Steel. I'm going to keep an open mind. Right. You know, but I just, you know, some of the people on some of the message boards can get a little, oh my gosh, some of the stuff that I've seen is just sick. But the sad thing is, as you judge them, you're one of them. I am absolutely <laughs> one of them. I am absolutely <laughs> one of them. But my oh opinion my gosh. is fact. Your opinion is fact. As I say in my world or right. my life, my opinion is fact. And it is. It's my opinion. It doesn't diminish Wonder Woman. And, and another argument is it diminishes Wonder Woman to be in a relationship with Super, Superman because she's one of the main females that actually has her own and she holds her own. And she's an icon. She's like I said, she's one of the big three. But if it doesn't diminish Lois, who for a short, short period of time had her own comic, why mm -hmm. does it diminish Wonder Woman. Wait, like, Lois had her own comic? Yeah, for a short period of time. Um, um, that's, that's, that's... Why? That's... Why and how come? Anyways, I can't even talk about it. But... Well, well before... Before... Because I can feel your passion, and I hope everyone else can too. Because I'm just like, I... I thought I loved my characters. Like, Lana loves... I'm gonna start calling you Lana Lane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I threw up in my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I think I'm gonna start calling you that. I'm a, the next podcast, I'm gonna say, you know, it's it's Madden LL for short. <laughs> 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 well, so everyone out there, uh, we haven't revealed this yet, but you know, we want to keep everything, which is our passion, as you can tell, listening the past hour is all nerd culture. But we do have a particular outlier of something that we really, really love, we love and it. that. We'll, we are going to touch base on in the closing, but it'll it'll come up from time to time, so you just got to get used to it. You'll love us regardless, but this is, you know, whether you like the show or not, just deal with it. So we are huge Scandal fans. Yeah, see? <laughs> As you can hear. And I came into the show in this, I think the premiere of season two, I saw the first season. And if you guys don't know, Scandal is a show on ABC about a woman by the name of Olivia Olivia Pope, played by Kerry Washington, and the, did you say the did you say the great Kerry Washington? Were you about to say that? The great Kerry Washington. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Let me let me two steps back. Played by the great Kerry Washington, and she's what you call a fixer, and she happens to be having an affair with a with the president, not a with the president of the United States. Of course, he's married. So the show is just. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it deals with, like, politics. It deals with interracial couples. It deals with uh, very emotionally driven, um, a lot of shocker. It's written by Shonda Rhimes, who created Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice. So, you know, those people die every other episode. Um, and the season finale was this past Thursday. So Lana and I kind of talked about it, but I just want to get, you know, what are, your, what are your thoughts on the finale? Like, how did you feel... Were you satisfied for the next four to five months? Will you be okay? Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you haven't seen the episode yet, half of you probably have not, that's okay. Uh, that was a huge spoiler, and I don't care. Uh, but the ending, literally, that was the end. That was what Olivia and, Pope and said. I just, all I said was the word. I didn't say who was talking to who. I just said dad. Right, right. Um, and, and, wow, okay. So... What can I say? I think it was brilliant. Can I just say the wrap-up of David Rosen's storyline brought me to tears? It, it I was, was 
so overwhelmed and I was so happy and I was so proud. I was so happy for him. Mm -hmm. I was so happy that there was no betrayal. I was so satisfied with that. I can't they wrote that. tell you. They wrote that so that I guess oh, Shanta and her crew, they gosh. wrote it so well because I thought that he was, you know, mole number two. And okay, to backtrack, the season arc or the big arc of the season was there was a mole in the presidency or in the White House. And, you know, the, Carrie's team, Carrie Washington's team was trying to find who the mole was. So, you know, it was like, basically there was like a top seven list and then, you know, people were either show up dead or they were not there. So they weren't the mole. And David Rose, Rose, am I saying it right? Rosen? Rosen? What was he originally? The Chiefs or... Um, he, was a, he was a DA. DA, yeah. Uh, for, for DC. Yeah. And obviously this is filmed in DC. And um, he was fired very, very early in the season and he it's kind of been a bum because no one in the city and politics wants to touch him with a 10 foot pole. So he kind of did this betrayal thing. So everyone that's watching the show is like, he's the mole, he's the mole. And it turns out that he is one of the key players in getting the mole caught. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, like Lana said, it, it was just a great climax to a story. I didn't see that coming. Cause I thought he was the mole. Oh, I thought he was going to end up dead or it something. Was brilliant. And it, I just say, when she opened the box and put on the white hat. Yes. I was done. I couldn't even handle it. I was so but actually go go two steps forward. When she when she walked out her apartment, which we've never seen, you've oh. never seen the inside of her building. And she's walking out with a all white outfit. You know, Carrie Washington is a huge uh she's a leader. She's a huge leader. She's very powerful and one of the episodes months or episodes episodes ago was called was it just called the white hat uh, or maybe in season one uh -huh. i think it's just, just the title of it so you know a white hat signifies power it signifies control it signifies leadership mm -hmm. so in the the title of that episode the white hat was dedicated to her and this episode was called was it called putting the white hat back on or putting the hat putting the white hat on it was some variation of that mm -hmm. and you know she puts the hat on at the end of this the season finale and it's a really happy ending. I mean, everything is perfect, but of course, it's Shonda Rhimes. Nothing is ever perfect. Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, I, and she and she comes out of her apartment with an all white outfit on, which obviously signifies power, leadership, control. She's she's always in control. She's a fixer. Leaves her apartment. Everyone's staring at her, saying hi to her, or she's just smiling at them. But it looks kind of weird, you know. Everyone's staring at her, and then she opens up her apartment building's main doors, and there's news crew everywhere everywhere and that's how the show ends so yeah. for for five and months we don't you know we're like what we don't know you know what actually i think it might be on like what are we in june so we need july august it'll be back in september like two and a half months maybe but that's about two and a half months too long it's about yeah you're right it is and <laughs> I, was, I was about to repeat what you just said yeah it's, it's too long and i just and, you know, I got to say her gladiators, her cast, when she tells Fitz, they need me, I can't leave them. Um, I was just, I was blown away. And Jake, <sighs> Jake, being Jake. thrown into that little hole. Well, you know, he has a show on, and I'm, this isn't a spoiler, well, for you, Lana, but he has a show that premieres on Fox. <sighs> no! Yeah. So no. that, you can you can put two and two together with no. that. Oh, I'm know. Team Jake. I'm Team Jake. Uh, you you know I'm not. So I know you're not. we have to agree to disagree there. <laughs> it's like Jake, boy. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm looking at Fitz and I'm looking at Jake and I'm like Jake. No, no. One <laughs> one Fitz is Fitz is the president. I'm sorry, guys. Fitz Gerald is the president of the United States. I will always side with the person that can have me killed the quickest. Right. So, so give me, I want the pe to be behind the person with the most power. Yeah. Now, Jake is like, uh, works for some secret, 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 secret CIA section of CIA or of the CIA. I don't want that, you know, because I feel like you need to get your orders to kill me versus the president can just look at you, look at, the secret service and then you're dead before he looks back at you yeah like you you say you go to the bathroom you never come back right 
and no one at no one dare inquires where you are. They're like oh. 729. <laughs> 729, 729, 729, 729. You've been gone for 40 minutes. No one brought you up. <laughs> <laughs> and no one, everyone else that goes to the bathroom doesn't even go down that hall. They're just right. like, oh, oh, the bathroom's the other way. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't, who is, who, who's, who's Matt? Who's Matt? I don't know who that, who that is. Sorry, sir. Uh, yeah, you're just gone. Like, so I'd rather side with that. But no, we had to touch base. Yeah. This, uh, it's a huge, huge, huge show of ours, and it just took off, and we love it. Um, so look forward to that. So I guess Lana, in the in the closing, this is our first podcast, yes. uh, first of many. It's our pilot. Yeah. Uh, any any feedback, constructive. Yeah. Feedback. <laughs> Please, you know we 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 have been trying. We have been talking about this for months. Yeah. This is finally coming to fruition, and it's and it's just it's better than I expected. So look for more episodes of Blurs on Nerds. Uh, mm-hmm. Any questions? You can email us at blurredsonnerds at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. You can please follow us on Twitter yeah. at Blurs on Nerds. Blurs on Nerds, right? Blurs on Nerds. Just oh, bl- sorry, Blurred Nerd at Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, and uh, look for our. Ahead. Facebook page that will be up shortly, our fan page. And, you know, we will be starting a YouTube channel where if for whatever reason you would like to listen to our podcast on YouTube, Mm -hmm. you may do so. Yes. And please click and click, listen and subscribe on iTunes. Uh, I'll upload this one. Today is the 19th. I'll try to not date everything that we do, but um, I'll upload this tomorrow so the 20th so please look forward to that please listen please subscribe if there's anything you want us to talk about comics movies related more scandal um video games that was one thing we didn't get to talk about we're both video games well next week we'll do we'll talk about video games we're gonna talk about zombies world war z star trek star trek um and also we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Michonne, why she's so important, especially as a black woman Ooh. on The Walking Dead. We definitely need to touch base on that and some, you know, iPhone rumors, tech stuff. And yeah, if, you know, any questions, anything you want us to talk about, get our opinion on, please get in touch. Get in touch with the blurs because we're in touch with the nerds. Oh, I should get that tattoo. <laughs> I, should get, I should get that tattoo. I, how did, what did I say? Did I say? Okay, let's get in touch with the birds. <laughs> get in touch with the birds. Um, I didn't even get to talk about my Nathan. I'm gonna save him for next week. That'll be just a segment just dedicated to you. I I love. See, we're not gonna. We can't get into it. We can't get into we it. We can't. We don't have time. Suspense. The suspense is killing you, people. I know, but you have to wait till next week. So thanks so much for tuning in, Thank Lana. You. How how are you doing? Are you doing good? Are you? Yes, I'm happy. Awesome. Well, I'm feeling great. So, guys, please click subscribe, email us, tweet us, follow us, and we will definitely be back next week. All right. Yep. Have Bye, fun. guys. <laughs>